Today, we're gonna kick things off by going over some pretty exciting Starship updates going on in South Texas and go over some other Starlink news, see what missions are coming up, and then finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. In last week's episode, we went over SN7's first cryo test of failure that ended up springing a leak. Well, it was soon after repaired and again tested a second time to failure this week in an attempt to better understand the benefits of switching from 301 to 304 stainless steel. The patch held, but eventually the bottom dome bulkhead gave way, sending the tank several meters into the air and landing it on its side. And if you listen closely, you can hear it yell its last word. <coughs> Oddly enough, we still haven't heard how the test went, but I'll be sure to let you guys know as soon as I hear something. Shortly after the test was complete, SpaceX's new robo-pooch, Zeus, was seen scouting out the area. Good dog. And in an ironic twist of events, La Padre also captured lightning striking nearby that day. It's unclear if it actually struck the tank, however. Bad Zeus. So this tank is kaput, but Elon did tweet the other week that a new and improved one, using this type of steel and void of any weak points, is in the works. But next up to the plate is SN5. Elon shared a pic of her next to SN6 in what he is now calling the mid-bay, probably because they are about to erect a new taller high bay for the super heavy booster. Both starships are equipped with hexagonal heat shield tiles for vibration testing and Tesla batteries that will in the future be used to control the flaps. SN5 was moved out of the mid-bay on Wednesday and transported down Highway 4 on a crawler to the launch site, where it was mounted on its brand spanking new test stand. A road closure was scheduled for that, and the next one for other non-flight related testing, likely ambient pressure testing, is currently slated for Monday with backup dates following. Ultimately, what we're trying to see here is an eventual 150 meter hop, not seen since the days of Starhopper, and similar to this SM5 animation Corey shared with us on Twitter. Elon replied that with the offset single Raptor engine, it will look a little odd, but for now let's just all hope all goes well with the cryo and static test so we can see this thing through. RGV aerial photography provided us with some more shots of the area from the sky and included this one of the launch site where workers are on the early stages of the super heavy pad development. Yes, very exciting. And Maria's house that was purchased by SpaceX months ago is now the fire and safety and certifications building. And furthermore, SpaceX also has a nice campsite full of Airstream trailers. Sorry, employees only, no vacancy for tourists. And the last little bit of Starship news is that Elon confirmed he will once again be having his annual Starship presentation this fall. Moving on to Starlink news. For the first time, Starlink user terminals have been spotted in a couple different locations this past week, pointed at Sky. One in Boca Chica, Texas, and the other here in Wisconsin. These UFOs on a stick include small motors that position the terminals to follow overhead Starlink satellite signals. I guess you could say the tech is in an alpha testing development stage, the beta probably happening soon. The official rollout happening in just a few months after a few more Starlink launches happen to put the satellite tally over 800. And good news for you Canadians, SpaceX has been working with your government for permission to provide Starlink access to you people. Yeah, give us internet money! Elon tweeted that you Canadians eh, are a major priority for Starlink and that it works best for low population density situations. This 10th batch of Starlink satellites was supposed to launch this afternoon, but just a couple hours before T-0, SpaceX announced they were standing down due to a need for additional time for pre-launch checkouts. This Falcon 9 will carry 57 Starlink sats and two 120-pound Black Sky imaging satellites into low Earth orbit as part of their rideshare program. A rare image was captured today by a local photographer at the Cape of two SpaceX rockets sitting on adjacent pads. The one in the foreground being today's Starlink rocket, and the one in the background is next week's GPS-3 rocket, but lacking the fairing, which was spotted today traveling down the road toward the launch site. That mission for the U.S. Air Force is scheduled to launch next Tuesday. I'll be live here on the YouTube for that launch as well. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. On June 23rd of this week, NASA announced that it had created the Suborbital Crew, or Sub-C, office within the Commercial Crew program. Their mission is to develop a process for astronauts to fly on suborbital spacecraft like Virgin Galactic Starship 2 or Blue Origin's New Shepard, which will include qualifying such vehicles for human safety before NASA considers buying any seats. NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations is quoted as saying, We'll be looking at a new way for enabling NASA personnel to fly on commercial suborbital space systems by considering factors such as flight experience and flight history. 
To do so, NASA is seeking advice from the suborbital spaceflight community on the qualification process as well as costs. The agency could use suborbital flights to achieve three different types of missions, training astronauts, testing hardware, and microgravity research. Earlier this year, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine announced his interest in flying NASA personnel on suborbital flights, but the establishment of subsea is the first major step forward to making it a reality. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. The production of these videos are made possible by the generosity of my eccentric members and patrons. If you'd like more SpaceX news and other shenanigans in your week, you can learn how to join up using the links in the description below. And while you're down there, you can also find the information for the community's local SpaceX photographers. Don't forget to support them as well. I'll see you back here early next week for the GPS-3 mission. Until that time, have a nominal weekend and Godspeed.